Okay, so why should you not get an XPS 17 9730? I had this computer for like eight months now. I bought it pretty much when it came out and I'm just very disappointed. Um, let me also say I've been using XPS notebooks for about eight years now. So starting with the XPS 15 9500 and I, I was a big fan so far, but the XPS 17 9730, it's just a terrible machine and I am done with Dell. By the way, I have no commercial interest in making this video. The only reason for me to make it is to basically call out on a seriously problematic product that I want to warn others from. So if you think about buying an XPS 17 9730, let me tell you why it's probably not a good idea. And I have 10 reasons here. First of all, Windows and Intel broke any functioning standby. So with the XPS 17, you either have modern standby, which really never turns off anything except the screen and the Wi-Fi, uses about 5 to 10% battery per hour and lets the computer get incredibly hot in your backpack. Or you can use Hibernate, which needs pretty long to wake up uh, or put to sleep. And um, Dell knows about this. They know they basically have a don't have a functioning standby for the XPS and their response, and you can't make this up, is to tell people to please not transport their notebook in a backpack when it is in standby. So thanks for a notebook that you effectively have to turn off be before you can transport it anywhere, Dell. The other point is that you, when you put your XPS into hibernation, and all of these are known problems, it frequently crashed. This was the case for me. A Dell representative needed two hours to, to fix it by reinstalling a faulty driver. However, rather than fixing this driver, Dell reinstalled it automatically, so the computer started crashing again two months later. And the worst thing is, when the computer crashes in hibernation, it does a force restart, gets stuck in BIOS, and gets seriously hot, which, if you have it in your backpack, is a major problem. I mean... I could have cooked an egg on this computer when I got it out of my backpack at times. Third, and you can't make this up, the internal keyboard misses keystrokes when an external monitor or an external docking station is attached. Uh, I even had the physical motherboard, including the CPU and GPU replaced. I had a physical keyboard replacement and uh, the problem still occurred. Months later, Dell acknowledged it. It's a problem on all XPS notebooks. Dell promises to fix it. So until they do, you basically cannot type on this computer due to intermittently missing keystrokes. And again, Google this. All of these problems are actually known. Fourth, the i9 is severely limited due to wattage and heat limitations. And this problem is compounded because different from previous versions, you simply cannot undervolt the CPU. Um, so basically, the CPU is slower and hotter than my XPS 9700 from two years ago. Similarly, the XPS 4080 is equally severely lim limited by heat and wattage. Um, don't expect more than, let's say, 50% of what a desktop GPU RTX 4080 is capable of. So what Dell really did here is to put components that are nice to advertise, but that don't deliver even close to the performance that they should. Also, Dell never managed to really find a way to turn off the dedicated GPU when on battery, so you manually have to disable it in the device manager and then re-enable it so that the computer stops uh, pinging it all the time. Six, <clears throat> the battery runtime on the XPS 9730, and by the way, here it is. It's a huge machine with a huge um, battery close to 100, uh, uh, what do you call it, watt hours. Uh, it's about two to three hours. So if you manually deactivate and then manually reactivate the dedicated GPU, as I just said, you can maybe, when I was lucky, I could get four to five hours if you try really hard. But come on, I mean, this is about as much as a notebook from 20 years ago could accomplish. So seventh, the problem of the low battery runtime is compounded by the 4K display. Which, yeah, it sounds cool, but you basically have to set Windows scaling to 150% to see anything. Otherwise, <clears throat> I mean, even though it's a huge screen, as you can see, but for a 4K display, it's simply too small. 
So realistically, a 3K 1440p display would have been a much better choice. But again, while this would have been much more usable, well, it just doesn't sound as cool in the advertised specs. Last point, uh, no, uh, eighth point. When I connected this computer to any Dell docking station, and I've tried three different ones, I always got intermittent screen blackouts as soon as you connect to 4K 140Hz monitor. Believe me, I've tried all kinds of cables, HDMI, um, three types of docking stations, three types of monitor. I had two different XPS 9730 motherboard. It just seems to be a systematic problem. Uh, it never occurred with any other computer, so this is really the, the XPS. And to top it all off, uh, I use data. I'm a statistician, so I compared the speed difference of the XPS 9730 to my friend's MacBook Air M1, which is by now three years old. I mean, I think this is, what, 2020, 2019, and I use the statistical software's data. You can't make this up. My i9 is actually not faster than a MacBook that costs um, about a fifth of its price, uses a quarter of its wattage, and does not even have a cooler while my i9 jumps to 100 degrees at the slightest occasion. Tenth, and finally, there's the price. So I paid close to uh, 5,000 euro for this computer, for a machine that has an effective runtime of two to three hours on, of battery, gets outperformed by a three-year-old Mac without a cooler, uh, and for a fifth the price. So really, I've been a huge XPS fan, but this is it for me. So bottom line, it's really a terrible computer. Its components seem perfect, but they simply do not work. Uh, the computer can't handle it. To be fair, Dell customer service was always great. Whenever I had a problem, uh, they just fixed the hardware, but that cannot change the sheer amount of problems that I did have with this machine and that did have to get fixed. So if you want a machine that you can actually work with rather than having to work on, which I had to do a lot, and in the end, I just, you know, sort of deserted this PC, do not get the Dell XPS 17 9730. I honestly wish I never would have. Uh, much less paid almost 5,000 euro for it. It's, it's frankly a disgrace for Dell, which used to make great XPS notebooks that I've used for eight years. So, yeah. Uh, this is it for me. I hope this review is helpful for you out there. If you think about buying an XPS, uh, I cannot recommend it. Um, 